my name's Leo and I'm an English boat builder on a mission to rebuild and restore this 1910 sailing yacht called Tally Ho. Now it's been quite a busy time for various reasons but the first thing to do now is to get out the last remaining deck beams and start working on getting the knees out. <laughs> morning it's bloody cold I got Tim here helping me again and uh, we're gonna try and get some of the knees out today because I got most of the beams out uh, in the last few days but uh, some of the ends of the beams are still fastened to these big hanging knees which are these big L-shaped bits of metal and uh, lodging knees which are the same shape but horizontal so we got to try and get them out So these fastenings are really coming out a lot easier than I expected, which is great. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> I cut this beam off at both ends and it was all still one beam. I went to pick it up in the middle, it just snapped right in the middle. Oh, did it really? Yeah. <laughs> Most of the knees out, there's only two left, one hanging knee and one lodging knee left to take out. The hanging knees are the ones which go from the deck beams down to the frames, and the lodging knees are the ones which go from the deck beams horizontally onto the beam shelf. Nice to have some help from Tim earlier. I really need a shower. <laughs> In my last video I asked if you thought that Patreon was a good idea and the response was very positive so I set up a Patreon account and what that means is if you want to become a patron of the rebuild of Tally Ho then you can sign up to automatically donate any amount, large or small, to the project every time a video is released. Now I'm not going to do too much exclusive content for patrons because I think it should be accessible to everyone but I am working on some merchandising ideas for patrons and there will be credit given as well. Um, if you want to look into that then just follow the link below the video or see my own website. And a massive thank you to everyone who's already donated the project or otherwise helped it. So I'm not quite sure what to do here, I dropped through this plastic tap to get a bit more access to this knee and uh, I guess there was a nest of wasps inside. I think I worked them all up, maybe chopped a couple in half on the way through. They don't seem to be too angry, but uh, they're all kind of just waking up and some of them are flying away, but there's still quite a lot in there. Ah, I think that vacated them. Hey. Fun? Yeah. Look at 
They're all pretty gross colours though. <laughs> Now this is the last knee to come out of the boat, so pretty pleased about that. This one was the most difficult, of course. <laughs> right, so I just got to Port Townsend and I'm looking for timber. So I'm going to go see a couple of different boat builders in a couple of different yards. Uh, I've heard there's some live oak down the road, so I'm going to go and look at that. So this is live oak, and live oak is one of the best species of oak available. I think it's almost 10 times heavier and denser than your standard white oak. Uh, it's traditionally used for shipbuilding. We used it for frames because it's so strong, so durable, very rot resistant, and, and it often grows in sharp crooks, which is exactly what you want for frames and what I want. But unfortunately, this stock here I'm looking at is fairly straight. So it's not ideal for what I want. It's also got quite a lot of sapwood in it and it's a lot thicker than I need. Uh, I need 10 quarter finished, which means two and a half inches. And this is 16 quarter, which is four inches. So there'll be a big wastage on this and I'd have to resaw it all. But it could be good. It's nearby, it's pretty good price and it would work for the straighter frames in the bow section. So I'm gonna keep this in mind, but I'm gonna keep looking. Now I'm reading the moisture content of the wood here, 17%. Now that's actually drier than I was expecting, but it is the one on the top. So that piece is saying 22% moisture. So I'm at Haven Boatworks in Port Townsend. You can just see some good work going on here. Now I've just met up with Robert, who uh, runs the Schooner Master Foundation and is a very accomplished boat builder and captain. And uh, we're just talking about his project here. Um, so what's this boat? This Her is name is Bout, and she's a Spitzgatter uh, design in, in 36, launched in 37 in Denmark. Uh -huh. And she's owned by a couple in uh, Bainbridge, uh -huh. who have a great deal of heart for the vessel. And we decided on a complete restoration. And so you've already replaced a lot of the center line? Yes, her center line, uh, all the oak was iron sick, um, and her station frames and the floor timbers are iron sick. Mm -hmm. And so um, the idea was to replace the center line and then to replace all the uh, station frames and floor timbers, and then use every other plank as a rib band and steam in new steam bent frames, and then uh, plank up and then put in new clamps and deck structure. Mm -hmm. This is a complete rebuild, will there be much left of the original? Well, the cabin sides will be original, um, and the uh, cabin roof will be original. We're going to probably do a cold mold it over the top of the original TNG. And then I think um, the engine will re reuse, but it's not an original engine, it's a universal uh, diesel. One of the things that's really lovely about a wooden uh, vessel, especially a traditional wooden vessel, is over the lifetime of the vessel, it, Pieces of it can be renewed over and over again to keep it fit for sea. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it, that kind of construction le lends itself to that. So for instance, if, if this vessel, or let's say Tally Ho, um, let's say at some point in her life she receives new bottom planking or some frames, she'd still be Tally Ho. Mm -hmm. So if we knew back in the day that they put in a series of frames and planks and some deck strakes, she'd still be Tally Ho. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about is the magnitude of the change all at once, mm -hmm. which makes us feel that maybe it's not the same boat. Yeah. But one could argue that the soul of the boat remains. Yeah. I heard someone saying a wooden boat's almost like a living thing like the human body replaces itself every yeah. seven years right. apparently. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah with the same person. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We're at Port Townsend Foundry and this is Pete. How and you Pete doing? is the partner owner and yeah. um, Chief, Chief bottle washer, head, head honcho. <laughs> yeah. 
So, do you reckon this is cast or wrought iron? Yeah. Well, I would believe it would have been, had been cast because the forging would have had more sharp corners. Although, obviously, forging this out by hand or doing that either would have had a lot more dimples and, yeah. and or hammer marks oh, where yeah. you would have built a forge piece. So they probably would have cast it and then finish forging out, either changing the angle slightly or whatever uh -huh. they needed to do. This cast iron is more brittle, correct? Yeah, but it also, too, depends on... What, which alloys are so different across yeah, the yeah. broad that once you yeah. get into the right stuff, as far as cleaning up, reusing, yeah. doing all that, yeah, there's probably still life in them. Yeah. yeah. And the next question is, would you make a new set out of bronze? Yeah. If I can afford it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll put you to work. Uh, yeah, that's okay. See, uh, yeah. <laughs> Tell us what what the advantage of silicon bronze is? The silicon bronze is 94% copper and that uh, essentially has a much higher yield or elongation. The elongation allows it to stretch 35%. The aluminum bronze has only 6 to 9% elongation. This is uh, only about 60,000 psi, that's 110,000. So it yields at almost 70, this yields at 18. Wow. But it stretches a long time before it breaks. Yeah. So that's this is the stuff you make turnbuckles and toggles, the things you know you want the yield to stay in place, yeah. but be way above your wire or any of the other fittings. So be way over engineered. Where everything else that you have loaded, say, uh, again, like pad eyes, where you'd rather have them stretch a little bit before they would fail, because yeah. you could notice that there's now yeah. slop in there. And they'd be silicon bronze because Basically, they have that, that stretch. stretch. Yeah. And then, uh, say like rudder fittings, going underwater, 94% copper is going to last really well. Yeah. But also, if your rudder was out of alignment as the wood swells, the copper will bend over and then set itself. Mm -hmm. So now your pinnels and gudgeons would wear evenly versus right. that being so hard, you'd have to have them exactly in line. Yeah. Cheers, good Thanks to see you. Pete. And Get some hard work in there. Yeah, <laughs> and obviously swing by whenever you want. Okay, I will. So, cheers. Say hi to the, say hi to the boys. <laughs> hey, boys. It's <laughs> making me stupid bad for you. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is okay. <laughs> Here we go. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hello. <laughs> How was your journey? Fine. It was nice. Welcome to America. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> so these guys just arrived from England. Hello. This is Matt and Tom. Hello. <laughs> and Jack is being an Italian mama. She's made a nice pasta and we've got a dining table in the workshop. So Matt's just got off this piece which is uh, the piece that was behind the ballast keel underneath the keel timber here. And uh, we're taking that off so that we can get to the bottom of the keel timber, bottom of the stern post and we're going to be doing some repairs on the keel timber at some point. It wasn't actually held on by very much. And this piece is a piece of oak and it holds the lower rudder pintle, so the rudder would have sat on this piece, had a female counterpart to this, and uh, this is bronze, and would have done quite a lot of work in its life, I guess. How's it going? It's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to just explain what you're doing? No, I'm knocking these pins back through on uh -huh. this side. Because you want to save them, don't you? <laughs> Maybe. <coughs> so we're working on getting the floors out. And uh, all these big rivets are uh, holding them in. Alright, well I am now in the process of removing the chain plates. And as you can see, on this boat, the chain plates are mounted outside the hull. They're bolted through the planks, through the frames, and through the hanging knees. I've already got the hanging knees off, so I'm just driving the bolts out.
So these are chain plates and their job essentially is to hold the rig up, so the mast, the sails, the rigging. Um, they're attached to the outside of the hull and they take the standing rigging which goes from these eyes up to different points on the mast to hold it up. Now on most traditional boats the chain plates are on the outside of the hull and I believe that's a better way to do it because you don't have to have a hole in the deck for them. On my last boat they were through the deck and fastened to the inside of the hull and uh, that led to lots of fresh water going through the deck and eventually led to my mast snapping and the chain plate coming out and 10 months of repair work. So outside is better, I think. Tally has got three of these on each side. These are original, I would have thought, and could certainly be reused, but again, ideally I'll be avoiding any ferrous metal on the boat. So that would mean getting bronze chain plates made. The advantage of that is that they won't be corroding and these look like they're in pretty good condition and they actually are but you can see on the back how they have corroded and pitted through the rust. If you're using the boat a lot and you're at sea and you're around salt water uh, you will get rust streaks coming down the hull from these if they're made out of steel or iron whereas you'd completely avoid that with bronze. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Nothing. Look down there, it looks clean. Ah. It'll look good eventually. No farm girl. <laughs> Alright guys, well that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching and for all your support. There's been quite a lot of distractions this week, but things are moving forward and hopefully next week we're going to really get back into the swing of things and make some good progress. So, I'll see you then. Thank you.